Hi, my name is Dr. Savan Hilo, Head of Male Infertility at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. In this Mayo Clinic Men's Health Moment, I'll discuss medications used to treat male infertility. I hope that you'll find this video useful. One in six couples will be unable to get pregnant after a year of trying. Up to 50% of the time, it's in due to some part to a male fertility factor. Men who have no sperm or low sperm counts should have their hormone levels checked. These labs should be drawn between 6 to 10 in the morning because that's when your testosterone levels peak. Medications that may be used to treat abnormal hormone levels in men who also have low sperm counts include human chorionic gonadotropin, selective estrogen receptor modulators, and lastly, aromatase inhibitors. A word about testosterone and sperm production. Testosterone is necessary for normal sperm production. A normal testosterone level is considered greater than at least 300 nanograms per deciliter, which is the unit typically used in, in the United States to measure testosterone. Men who have no sperm or who have low sperm counts and low testosterone may benefit from treatment with medication. In addition to presenting with infertility, Men may also have other symptoms of low testosterone, which include difficulty putting on muscle mass or losing weight, fatigue or decreased energy, or decreased sex drive and problems getting erections. Now, men with low testosterone and infertility can't be treated with testosterone replacement therapy, which is sometimes what you think of when you think of bodybuilders who use steroids to build muscle. That's because testosterone itself shuts down sperm production if it's given exogenously. Treatments for male infertility and low testosterone are aimed at boosting the testicle's own ability to produce sperm. Keep in mind that sperm production takes an average of 72 days, so any treatment changes that we make or any medications that we start will take at least three months to have an effect, and most of them will peak at around six to nine months. The first medication we'll discuss is human chorionic gonadotropin. It's the only FDA-approved medication that we'll talk about for the treatment of infertility and low testosterone. It's dosed as an injection that the patient will be taught how to do at home of 2,500 units twice a week. It's typically quite expensive, it ranges anywhere from $500 to $1,000 a month, and is often not covered by insurance. It has been shown to improve sperm production in up to 80% of men, the average time it takes for HCG to have an effect on sperm counts is seven months, and the average time that couples have taken to achieve a pregnancy is around 28 months. Factors that may predict a poor response to this medication include men with a history of an undescended testicle, smaller than normal testicle size, elevated body mass index or BMI, and an extremely low baseline testosterone level. Side effects of this medication include changes in your sex drive, increased risk of blood clots, breast enlargement, acne, and weight gain. The next class of medications we'll talk about are selective estrogen receptor modulators, or SERMs for short. These medications are not FDA approved for the treatment of infertility or low testosterone. They have been prescribed for over 50 years, but have never undergone the rigors of FDA approval. They're also used to induce ovulation in women. The most commonly used medication is called clomiphene citrate. It's dosed as 25 milligrams daily for three weeks, then off medication for one week, and then repeat. The cost of this medication ranges from $15 to $30 a month, and the majority of men who have sperm on semen analysis will see an improvement in their counts after taking this medication. This medication has also been shown to have up to a five-fold increase in the chance of achieving a spontaneous pregnancy, 
and it improves the likelihood of finding sperm at the time of a testicular sperm extraction procedure. The maximal benefit of this medication is around six to nine months. Factors that may predict a poor response to the medication include smaller than normal sized testicles and low baseline hormone levels. Side effects of this medication include changes in sex drive, headache, breast tenderness, and acne. The last class of medications we'll talk about are aromatase inhibitors. These medications are not FDA approved for the treatment of infertility or low testosterone. They have been prescribed for the last 25 years and are often used to treat breast cancer as well. The way this medication works is it works by reducing the conversion of testosterone to estrogen, which often occurs in fatty tissue. And the men who are most likely to benefit from this class of medications are men who are obese or who have a high estradiol level, which is a type of hormone level. The most commonly prescribed medication is anastrozole. It's dosed as one milligram daily for three weeks, then off the medication for one week, and then repeat. The cost is typically around $10 to $20 a month. The majority of men who have sperm on semen analysis will see an improvement in their counts, and it also increases the chance of spontaneous pregnancy. Lastly, it also improves the likelihood of finding sperm at the time of testicular sperm extraction procedures. The maximal benefit of this medication will also be around six to nine months. Side effects of the medication include an increased risk of blood clots, cataracts, and a rare skin condition, which is a form of an allergic reaction called Stevens-Johnson syndrome. In my practice, anastrozole or aromatase inhibitors are typically a last resort, particularly because of the increased risk of blood clots. This has to do with the effects of changing the estrogen to testosterone ratios. Regardless of which medication you choose, we will typically have you follow up with the following. For men who are on human chorionic gonadotropin, we'll have you perform follow-up labs and semen analysis in three months. If there's no improvement at that point, we'll add a second injectable medication called human menotropin gonadotropin two to three times a week. This medication is typically costly just like human chorionic gonadotropin. If you're on clomiphene citrate or anastrozole, we'll ask you to perform follow-up blood work in six weeks. Keep in mind these labs need to be drawn between 6 to 10 a.m. to have an accurate testosterone level, and you do not need to be fasting for these labs. Regardless of which treatment you choose, we'll ask you to perform follow-up lab work and semen analysis again at six months after being on the medication and then every six months after that. Thank you so much for watching this Mayo Clinic Men's Health Moment on medications used to treat male infertility. I hope that you found this video useful. If you'd like to make an appointment to be seen for male infertility, please call the number provided on your screen or go to mayoclinic.org. Thanks so much for watching.